Hi everyone, I'm Rincy and I'm one of the contributing editors over at Book Riot. I'm back to do a new release Tuesday video as always and today I'm going to be talking about books that are coming out on Tuesday, November 3rd and also uh, happy election day to everyone in the United States. I hope you cast your ballot if you are eligible. The first book I have this week is White Ivy by Susie Yang. Ivy Lin is a thief and a liar but you'd never know it by looking at her. Raised outside of Boston, Ivy's immigrant grandmother relies on Ivy's mild appearance to teach her how to steal things from places like yard sales and secondhand shop. Thieving allows Ivy to collect the trappings of a suburban teen and most importantly to attract the attention of Gideon Speyer, the son of a wealthy and extremely political family. But when Ivy's mother discovers what is going on, she immediately punishes her by sending Ivy to China. Years later, Ivy has grown up into a a poised but restless young woman who is haunted by her family history and upbringing. Back in Boston, when Ivy bumps into Sylvia Speyer, Gideon's sister, a reconnection with Gideon seems not only inevitable, it feels like fate. Slowly, Ivy sinks her claws into Gideon and the entire Speyer clan, attending dinner parties and things like weekend getaways to the Cape. But just as Ivy is about to get everything that she has hoped for, a ghost from her past resurfaces, threatening everything that she has worked so hard to get. So this is being described as like a coming of age novel but it obviously has like kind of like that dark psychological element to it. It provides not only this view into the immigrant experience in the United States but you're also following this character who is very obsessed with the privileged and those in the upper classes and kind of how that obsession kind of changes how she uh, lives her life and things like that. It sounds super interesting and I'm definitely intrigued by this book and again that's called White Ivy by Susie Yang. Next I have Miss Benson's Beetle by Rachel Joyce. It is 1950 and London is still reeling from the effects of a World War II. Marguerite Benson is a school teacher and a spinster and she is trying to just survive on scraps. One day she reaches a breaking point. She abandons her job and her small existence to set off on an exhibition halfway across the world. She is in search of a childhood obsession, this insect that may or may not exist, the golden beetle of New Catalonia. When she advertises for an assistant to accompany her, the woman she ends up with is the last Thing that she had in mind. Fun-loving Enid in her tight pink suit and pom-pom sandals seems to attract problems everywhere she goes. But together these two British women find themselves drawn into a cross-ocean adventure that exceeds all expectations and delivers something that neither of them ever had in mind, the transformative power of friendship. So Rachel Joyce has written a number of novels including The Unlikely Pilgrimage of Harold Fry and The Music Shop as well as a couple of others that have come out over the past couple of years and she's really good at writing these sort of like feel good historical fiction books that even though like the premises seem pretty saccharine they often feel very like real to life and uh, I feel like feel good books aren't a bad thing and I feel like that could be something that people are wanting right now and so if you are someone who wants something that will cheer you up a little bit something that looks at female friendships and kind of the power of that then this might be a good book to pick up and again that's called Miss Benson's Beetle. Next I have Aphasia by Mauro Javier Cardenas. Antonio wants to avoid thinking about his sister even though he knows he can't avoid thinking about his sister because his sister is currently on the run after allegedly threatening to shoot her neighbors and has been claiming that Antonio, her mother, as well as Obama and the Pentagon have all been conspiring against her. Nevertheless Antonio is going to try to be avoidant because he is worried that what's been going on with his sister might invade his relatively contented ordered American life and destabilize the precious arrangement that he has set up with his ex-wife in order to see his two daughters. In fact, he's doing everything except facing his problems head on. Transcribing the recordings of his mother talking about their troubled life in Colombia, transcribing recordings of his ex-wife talking about her idyllic life in the Czech Republic, writing about former girlfriends whose words and deeds still reoccur in his mind, and rereading stories that help him skirt the issue of his sister's state of mind with and completely destroying his own. 
So this is a story from an author that I've never really heard of before, but he wrote the book The Revolutionaries Try Again, which maybe you're aware of. This is a book written that looks at kind of like this dysfunctional Colombian family. And it's written in kind of this stream of consciousness style with these like sort of long rambling sentences. And so it's kind of like that borderline experimental in nature. So if you are someone who kind of enjoys that and kind of enjoys these sort of discussions around like mental health and things like that that are told from a first person perspective this one sounds like it might be up your alley and again that book is called aphasia next i have the harpy by megan hunter lucy and jake live in a house by a field where the sun burns like a ball of fire lucy has set her career aside in order to devote her life to their children to their house and to their finely tuned routine but then a man calls one afternoon with a shattering message his wife has been having an affair with Lucy's husband, Jake. The revelation marks a turning point. Lucy and Jake decide to stay together, but they make an arrangement that's meant to sort of even the score and save their marriage. She will hurt him three times. As the couple submits to a delicate game of crime and punishment, Lucy begins to change, surrendering to a transformation of both body and mind that there's no returning from. So this is a book that is being described as part fairy tale, part revenge thriller, which that wild that's not something I was expecting it's a story about marriage and infidelity and power and I think that if you're someone who enjoys domestic thrillers then this is probably a good book for you but it also has this fairy tale element to it that makes it a little bit different than most domestic thrillers and again that's called The Harpy by Megan Hunter and the final book I have this week is The Same River Twice A Memoir of Dirtbag Backpackers Bomb sh Shelters and Bad Travel by Pam Mandel given the choice Pam Mandel would say no and stay home but it was getting her nowhere, so she decided to say yes. Yes to hard work and hitchhiking, to mean boyfriends and dirty travel, to unfolding the map and walking to its edges. A product of beige California suburbs, Mandel was overlooked and unexceptional. When her father sends her off on a youth group tour of Israel, he inadvertently catapults his 17-year-old daughter into the world of angry European backpackers, sees the day Israelis, and the fallout of Cold War era politics. With no guidance, no particular plan and completely unprepared for what lies ahead, Mandel decides to say yes to everything and everyone, embarking on an adventure across three continents and thousands of miles. So this is a new travel memoir that sounds really interesting and it basically talks about how Mandel basically came of age while traveling around the world. From California, she heads to Israel and then basically travels around the world from London to Pakistan to the Himalayas. And all, through all of this, she is figuring out who she is and who she wants to be. So if you are someone who enjoys these kind of travel memoirs, as well as like coming of age memoirs, things along those lines, uh, this will probably be right up your alley. And again, that's called The Same River Twice by Pam Mendel. So that is everything I have for you all this week. Let me know down in the comments below what book that are coming out today that you are excited about. Otherwise, I will see you all again next Tuesday with another set of new releases. Bye!